Welcome to the Furlough Capital Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about the intricacies of passively investing in real estate. And our mission, it's simple, is to help people invest wisely in not only properties, but people so that together we can build our wealth and improve housing. I'm James, and this is my wife, Jessie. I'm here, and peace. Peace. <laughs> like if that's, yeah, <laughs> that thumbnail probably makes no sense to anybody, but our son went through a phase where he would make that sign in all of his pictures, and we thought he was like shooting a gun. Cool. Was, like I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He yeah. later we discovered he was like, no, dude, that's a peace sign. We were like, your thumb oh, and index finger is a okay. peace sign. All right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So peace. Peace. Peace out. Yeah. Kind of a weirdo, but you know, runs in the I family. Mean, it is I, a guess. Piece, I guess. I guess. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. So what I want to talk about is something that we did before we had our kids. Yeah. Yeah. A long time I ago. I know. So we've already talked once about our very first purchase, mm -hmm. our duplex. Yeah. Today, I'd like to talk about our second purchase, which was a duplex. A duplex. Yeah. Do you remember why we decided to buy or what got us ready to buy that duplex? Um, not necessarily okay let me give you a, a reminder wake up money oh yeah does that mean anything the, to yeah you? well it was the classes that lee did for a long time uh-huh who's lee lee is the agent who helped us buy our first place yeah. also a good friend yeah was yeah business partner at one point yeah and you worked with him i worked with him, him. yeah 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 so he did these classes called wake up money yeah which i i think it was like a one evening thing yeah if i remember correctly it's it was good. like mostly a dvd series mm -hmm. where we'd watch this guy and then he would kind of work you through it and the the whole idea behind it was this concept of wake up money i ultimately think of it as a little bit different than that but the idea being if you invested passively you would just get money when you woke Wait. up <laughs> and he ran through a very simplistic example where he goes what if every few years i can't remember the exact timeline i feel it's like I think it was like every year or every other year. I think it was whatever, every other. You buy a house because mm -hmm. you just you have a job, you save, you invest it in the house. And then in 20 years, was kind of his thing, is like you'd have 10 houses. And then you take your five oldest or maybe your five lowest performing ones, however you want to think about it, mm -hmm. sell those and use the proceeds from those sales to essentially pay down or refinance your the remaining portfolio and just skyrocket up your cash flow and now you have wake up money and you can retire mm -hmm. that's kind of his that was what he laid out lee was doing it to generate leads mm -hmm. <laughs> people who are interested in buying investments and so he was going like very smart right going down the education route let mm -hmm. me teach people about this idea so then they want to invest and then they'll come to me yeah that was the whole thing and i know for us we were we took it because we were friends and we'd already bought a place and he was like, yeah, you guys should do it. And, and it was through that one of the promptings was like, where do you potentially have funds that are just hidden hiding mm -hmm. there? And for us, I had a Roth IRA that my parents had set up for me when I was younger, like 16, mm -hmm. they started paying into it. And um, so I had a pretty good principal balance that was just sitting there. It was like, I think it was like $40,000 or something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it was significant and and that was enough I, or at least that was a big chunk of it maybe we combine it with something else i don't fully remember now hmm. um but that was enough for us to do down payment on another property and so we started looking and um do you remember that process at all for i remember it really distinctly for the first one for the second one i think we 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 looped back through like the the same set of standards or something that we had looked at before and it was like okay it's got to be you know make this much money it's got to be in this location you know we had different features or things we were kind of yeah. looking for Which, but by we the way, would what's look like at what's your number everything one oh criteria. it has to be cash flow positive <laughs> day one yeah i uh, we we went back and forth and you were like but there's this thing called appreciation and it's okay if it's losing money if you can re if you can fix it up and then you refinance it or you sell it or raise rents yeah you raise the rents and no. i was just like uh no why in the <laughs> world would i buy anything that loses money oh, I that's know. not an investment i love that which i i now understand how you can 
take something that is potentially losing money and then flip it and turn it into something great. But I still don't like it. So we don't do it. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm kind of doing it right now. But Well, um, <laughs> true. Yeah. For uh, buy and hold. But, if, we, if you were going to buy yeah, and hold. That's fair. Uh, I would... I would struggle. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, yeah, so that was what we did. So at the time, since we were now friends with Lee, um, he, I was able to have him essentially download all active mm-hmm, listings mm-hmm. in the MLS for the surrounding area. And we were solely looking at multifamilies. We didn't care at all about single family homes. Mm-hmm. And we were in like that, you know, two to four range. Yeah. And I had some general heuristics based on all the market research that I'd done on mm-hmm. like how much certain bedrooms would rent for. Mm -hmm. And so I set up just a real quick number that was like, okay, these many bedrooms in this area is going to rent for this, did the math, and then did a division of the rent divided by the price and essentially did a sort by Mm. what number was highest on Mm -hmm. that ratio. And and that was, that was my starting criteria because I figured that's, that's chances are it's going to be one of those up there. And I think I then looked into, it was either like the top 10 or top 20 mm-hmm. of them. I think that's where I came into the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You may have shared the math with me, but that is long. You're like, <laughs> yeah, brain. whatever. Like, I don't care. Does it make money? <laughs> right. And so that was part of like, okay, I got to hit this ratio in order for it to make sense money-wise. And if I remember correctly, there were two that popped up. Mm. There was, and I think there were two duplexes mm-hmm. is ultimately what they were. And, and so we were like, okay, let's go. And we, I think we set up tours for both of them and something happened for one of them where we didn't actually end up going on the tour cause like it got on a contract or something. Mm-hmm. And then we walked through the one that we ultimately bought and it looked fine. It was mm-hmm. a fixture upper, but the ratios were great and there were already tenants in yep. place and we weren't going to move in cause we were still living at mm-hmm. our current duplex. Yep. And so we're like, perfect. We put on an offer like 160, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And I think they were renting out for, I think both sides were like 800 bucks mm-hmm. each. So it was this one per- magical 1% rule where 1% mm-hmm. of the monthly rent, e- or the rent, the monthly rent is 1% of the purchase price. Yeah. And so all the numbers, it was profitable day one. Yay. And so we bought it. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what we did with it after we bought it? Um, Not a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's for, the answer. I, for a while. As, you're not saying you don't remember a lot. We didn't do a lot. We didn't do, a, do lot. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it was profitable and the tenants who were in there were happy. And, you know, we I think we re-signed new rental lease agreements with them so that we could... Maybe yeah. we didn't right away. Or, uh, I think we did. I no, think we, we did. Because there was some, like, internal changeover. Yeah. Like, for example, in one unit, there were two dudes who were living there, and one of the guys ended up moving out. Yeah, so we that's just wrote true. a new we one for the one guy. Did it. Yeah. And then there was a lady living in the other unit, and then Lydia and her daughter, and then right. eventually the mom moved out, and the daughter yeah, stayed, and we, right. whatever, <laughs> let her live there. Yeah. And then she had not a revolving door of, of roommates, but she yeah. had a so few. A little and, turnover. Um, yeah, actually, it's super. Was, <laughs> You're thinking of the, yeah, go the listing that she made for yeah. finding roommates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we we found that at one point. We were like, oh my gosh, no wonder why she's getting yeah, this type so, of roommate. Yeah, so she, so she called me and said, hey, I'm looking for a roommate, but so far all I'm finding are like weirdos or like yeah. it's just losers, whatever, but I'm looking. And I was like, oh, where are you advertising? Because by now we'd like, we'd done this a few times, <laughs> like we knew. And and she was like, oh, just on Craigslist. I was like, really? So I went on a Craigslist <laughs> and I tried searching for it. And it was hard to find. <laughs> and so I finally was like, okay, I just got to like housing or roommates water or whatever it was. And I started going through every single listing. And eventually I found the one where I was like, oh, this is totally hers. <laughs> and it was zero pictures, zero information on the place. It was just like roommate needed, no weirdos. <laughs> Like, that was her <laughs> listing. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, All right. Okay. So I called her and I was like, I have some ideas if you want to make this listing better. <laughs> like maybe put in how much the rent is and what it is that they'll be renting. Maybe describe <laughs> some of the features a little bit. Yeah. Instead of saying no weirdos, maybe let's put this in a positive yeah, light. Let's, like let's what, what positive you like. characters are you looking for? Yeah. <laughs> It was pretty so funny. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, yeah, she ended up renting to a guy from work, and uh, he played video games. That was his thing, and it which kind of worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. Just kept to themselves. It wasn't until I think it wasn't until the end 
of like getting near the end of our mm-hmm. ownership where we, we finally had a turnover and yeah. she ultimately moved out. Yeah. And um, I think I went into overtime for like a week. Mm-hmm. I think I can't remember if I was still working for HP or not. I think I was. I think you were because I I remember going in and doing. I did a lot of the cleaning and then I did all the paint. And I I you didn't do all the paint. I painted. You painted. I did all the edge work. Oh, okay. Because I remember you, you were like, "Should we spray? Should we not?" And I was like, "No, no, no. It's not a big deal. <laughs> like I don't like to tape anything. I'm just gonna do it." And it took forever. It takes forever either way. Uh, so I've timed it. I've gone like the same unit, yeah, and true. I've rolled once the entire time, and I've sprayed once the entire time, and it was like it was uncanny. It was almost the exact same amount of time to do both. Yeah. The difference with spraying is you're spending all your time. Like you're spending 99% prepping. of your time putting up tape and prepping yeah. and getting it all set. And then it's like one day, one hour, boom, spray, take everything off, you're done. Huh. Whereas with rolling, like it's very little prep time, but you are rolling the entire time. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, pluses and minuses to both mm. ultimately. Yeah. So I remember how yeah, we did that turnover and it was, I just remember working and I was you, like, worked, you worked evenings and weekends. Oh, yeah. I would finish at HP mm-hmm. and then, like, get, like, a to-go type of dinner, like, peanut butter yep. jelly sandwich type of, like, what's quick. Yep. Eat while driving over to the unit. And I would work from, like, say, like, 5.30, maybe even 6 o'clock mm-hmm. until around, like, 1 a.m. Yep. And then I would drive home, hit the pillow by, like, 1.30 a.m. And then, and then I would push the bounds, like, work started at 8.00. And so I was usually like, I'd sleep until like 7, 7.30, something mm-hmm. like that. So I was getting like, it was good sleep, but man, it was. And then I remember I had new tenants scheduled to move in. And it was like, it had to finish that yep. night because they were moving in that next day. Mm-hmm. And I remember I didn't finish until like 2 or 3, uh, 3 a.m. Yep. And I was, so, and, and it was one of those like, I finished and then I had to pack everything everything at the time i didn't have my van so i had to pack all of my tools and everything into the jeep oh and i word. just i stacked i oh, packed I that little that. thing to the so brim crazy didn't even unpack it i just got home was like whatever and they could steal this for all i care i'm tired <laughs> and um yeah that was that was a lot that was a lot that's what yep. that was um but that was like that was it that was like the most amount of work that we ever put into that place mm-hmm. it was all consolidated into a week which is nuts. <laughs> yeah. But that's one of those that was things. A great, yeah, it was a great place. And it's and it was really through that. Yeah, I agree. It was through that that I came up with, it's not a concept. It's, uh, I don't want to call it. So you have wake up money and then you have passive, passive income. Like I have these terms. For mm-hmm. me, the one that resonated the most was what I started calling gyroscopic cash flow. Mm-hmm. Was the idea. So, you know, like you've seen those things where like the plates spin on a pole. Yeah. And um, I got to do one at Disneyland and they yeah. had me participate. And it was super <laughs> fun. And so the idea is that it spins. And once you get enough angular momentum going, it kind of keeps spinning. Yeah. And then it might start to falter and you got to yeah, give it another twist. Give it another twist. <laughs> and so what I like to think about is like, so there's a lot of initial effort, mm-hmm. which is the finding the property, underwriting it, getting all the funding, doing all that stuff. And then for this one, it was just kind of like, it just spun yeah. and it happened to spin. It was like once a month, right? I have to get the funds mm-hmm. or mow the lawn. And yeah. it was just like a little of this. A little spin. A little, little, little something, something. <laughs> and then every once in a while, like that one week thing, it was like double handed, full <laughs> focused. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and really just like got it spinning fast again and spinning in better than it was previously because mm-hmm. we were able to raise the rents on it, which was great. And, um, and then, yeah, so that was like, to me, that epitomized the idea of gyroscopic cash flow. Mm-hmm. And that's, if you're actively investing in real estate, that's really what it's like. Right. There's a, probably a lot of work up front and then not a whole lot, yeah. but it's not passive. You don't just get to walk yeah, away and never do anything. There's maintaining. You gotta, okay, yeah. let me, let me do this. Now we do have passive investors now, mm-hmm. and those are people who, you know, lend us, invest with us alongside to go do other stuff. And so there's a little bit of spinning at the very beginning where they got to look into the investment. They got to mm. figure out if it makes sense. There's not a whole lot during the whole period outside of send emails. And that's just kind of that little, little, mm. little something. And then at the end, there's stuff that has to happen. And there's a little bit more work too at tax time because mm-hmm. it's a little bit more complicated than, than Which normal. that's all you doing the spinning. No, I'm saying like when I send them an email, they got to read it. 
Uh, like that's a little spin. I understand. When it comes to taxes, I will send them, if they're equity holders, a K-1. If they're giving us a note, it's a 1099. Mm. And they got to do something with that. Yeah. It's not hard, but it's a little bit more than normal. Mm. And so, um, so yeah, that's the, that's the idea. And it was really this property got me thinking down that path of like, okay, what, what is it really like? Cause it's not passive mm-hmm. and at least for us, it wasn't this wake up money idea mm-hmm. though. They both have some truths in it, mm-hmm. but for me, it was just this gyroscopic income. I was like, yeah, that's what this is about. Yeah. And, um, that was what got us really excited about it. And for some reason on this page, I have a picture of my lawnmower, um, on the back of our Jeep. So yeah, it's cause you, I remember, yeah. Cause I mowed the lawns. Had to, yeah. We, we had our own property that you did the lawn for and we didn't have to go anywhere, but you were like, Oh, now if I have to do maintenance, like I got to take the lawnmower and I don't have a trailer. Like how am I yeah. going to get the lawnmower to a different house? Yeah. So and so I ended up buying one of those like old person scooter yeah. trailers that had a little <laughs> ramp a little on ramp. it. And I would put, it worked the, great. put the mower on it and yeah. go mow and leave. And yeah, it worked awesome. So yeah, every once in a while I would in jump here. in and do the lawn mowing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not and, often. Everyone's and I remember how glorious it was when we finally hired someone yes. to mow the lawns. Because I was like, so this is good. So, so much work. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was great. That was that was worth it. It, it looked yeah. so much nicer and we didn't have to you do it. To say? <laughs> well, I mean, just, we they just, have they, they have all the tools. You know, we have That's the lawnmower, fair. but they have edgers and blowers and, you yeah, know, whatever. Yeah, and then we get sprayers. the diagonals right? they do, yeah, they just, I was not. Just cut I, it. I don't have that cut time and patience. To <laughs> right. <do> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. But yeah, that was a great, like, that was a great investment. It was one where we bought it for, let's see if I can do the math here. We bought it for 160 mm-hmm. And I wish I, did I write down what year we bought it? No, it was a couple it years. It was in 2010? I was going to say 10 11? or 11. Because we bought our first place in 2009. So I yeah. feel like it would be 11. Okay. Was what it was. And like I said, we were positive cash flow mm-hmm. day one on this place. And then. Yeah, we increased rent. We ended up selling it 10 years later in yeah. 2021. And we ended up selling it for 360 was what it was. Yeah. That was a pretty decent return. Yep. And <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, great we return, were able actually. to roll that. That was part of the 1031 exchange we did. Yeah, that was part of what got us into the mm-hmm. storage, uh, not storage, uh, the warehouses. Yeah. Yeah, it was that one, the other duplex, and then the single family home that yeah. during this time that we were just talking about, we were living yeah. there. But yeah, that's uh, that's what we did. It was, yeah, that was a good investment. That mm-hmm. one worked out really well. And that was like, just grabbed a spreadsheet of everything available and did the math. It's harder to find those kind of ratios yeah. now. Uh, but at the time, I, I remember at the time that was like Albany always had one, maybe two a month that kind of met that mm-hmm. magic ratio that would make it profitable. Corvallis yeah. never did. Yeah. Lebanon had them, had a bunch, but it was also like, ah, I didn't want to head out in that direction. Mm-hmm. And so I knew if I got the spreadsheet, I'd find one. And there was like, yeah, there were, there were generally like, you know, five to 10 mm-hmm. that were pretty close. And then, you dive in a little further and like, oh, wait, this is just weirdness here. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, it was a good investment. So that was our second one. It was like, it's as hands-off. It's probably the most hands-off property we've bought. Is that a fair me, personally? I know a lot of yeah. them feel hands-off to you. As opposed, the warehouses kind of fall in that camp. Oh, uh, okay. So does the 15-bedroom, I, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess I... It's, it's, so I kind of... someone else managing it. I think but... about our investments in terms of phases. I have like... Sure. Um, I'm very like Marvel-esque, I guess. So phase mm-hmm. one was the I had a job Yeah. phase. And that's the duplex, duplex, single-family home, apartment, like mm-hmm. all those. Mm-hmm. Uh, flipped the piece of land, bought the place here. And then I have like phase two mm-hmm. i guess which i think of as the yeah the the warehouse and then the 15 bedroom mm-hmm. and now and i i don't know if i'm stepping into a phase three yet with this flip it's just because it's just so different but um but that's kind of how i'm and for the flip i raise funds so uh that's yeah, kind that's of like different. i'm like it's, it's it different. just feels different mm-hmm. maybe that's phase three i don't know um but yeah this uh yeah this was by far the the easiest mm-hmm. most hands-off one i think we've ever done it's yeah, even today, I think so. Mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, but good. So there you go. 
Thanks for listening. Hopefully you found that interesting and just a little bit more about how we think about it and how we got into it. And so we would totally appreciate it if wherever it is that you listen to the podcast, you leave us a quick rating. That'd be awesome. And we hope that you have a great day.